How's it going everyone? This is High Yield MCAT and today we're going to be talking about all six of our polar amino acids. So let's start with serine. Serine's three letter abbreviation is rather intuitive. It is just S-E-R. Its one letter abbreviation is also rather intuitive. Simply S. Now the most high yield thing about our amino acids is going to be their structures. So let's start by drawing the backbone of the amino acid that's going to be common to every single amino acid. Now what I'm going to draw is the R group or the side chain. That's what makes serine serine and not any other amino acid. So serine side chain is made up of one carbon attached to a hydroxyl group or an alcohol group. Now serine's classification is polar. And even though what we have in a hydroxyl group that looks like it could be ionized to make a negatively charged amino acid, that won't actually be the case because the pKr of this side chain is approximately 13. So for all practical purposes, it won't be ionized unless it is in the catalytic site of an enzyme that really has to work to make that ionization possible. And even then, serine will be most likely acting as a nucleophile and not as a base that is ionized or an acid. So special characteristics of serine are phosphorylation. So just phosphorylation, at least for purposes of the NCAT. So it's phosphorylated, not in its backbone, but in its side chain. So let's take a look at how that could work. So, if we erase the H here, and we take this O and form a phosphomonoester bond, that is how we can phosphorylate serine, right there. So I'm gonna erase this to make sure we remember that serine most of the time just has this hydroxyl group, but it does have that potential for phosphorylation. All right, now let's move on to threonine. Threonine's three-letter abbreviation, mind the pun, is THR. Its one-letter abbreviation is also rather intuitive. It is T. Now its structure, let's start off by drawing our N-terminus, our C-terminus, forming our backbone, and then drawing our side chain. It's going to be very similar to threonine. So we have one carbon, two carbons, but on that first carbon, we have the hydroxyl group just like serine. So you can think of threonine as serine, but with one more carbon. Its classification, of course, is going to be polar. Its pKr is nearly identical to that of serine. It will be 13. And unsurprisingly, its special characteristics also include phosphorylation, much in the manner that we saw with serine. Now let's move on to tyrosine. Tyrosine's three letter abbreviation is rather intuitive, TYR. However, it's one letter abbreviation is not as intuitive. It will be Y. One thing you can remember with tyrosine is it has that Y as the second letter. Therefore, it's one letter abbreviation is going to be Y. Now let's take a look at serine structure. So let's start by drawing out our N terminus, our C terminus, and now the side chain. So we have one carbon, and then we have a phenyl group. This OH attached to the end. So the classification of tyrosine is polar, and its pKr, interestingly, is a little bit lower, making a little bit more acidic than the others. Why might you think this could be? Well, if we take a look at the conjugate base of tyrosine, we'll see that that conjugate base is able to stabilize its negative charge quite well. So let's do that really quickly. So if we abstract this H off, let's say in solution or something else takes it off, we have a negative charge on this oxygen and we can draw several resonance structures. So if we move this down here, we can have a double bond come up and then that will carry the negative charge. And we can go all the way around the ring with this. 
But remember that in physiological pH, and you should remember that physiological pH is 7.4, this will not be ionized. If it were, it would fall under an acidic amino acid. So let's talk about special characteristics of tyrosine. Unsurprisingly, it has the potential to be phosphorylated, just like serine and threonine. However, it is also aromatic, thanks to that benzene ring. Therefore, it will show up quite prominently in UV spectroscopy, or more commonly known as UV spec. All right. Now let's move on to our next three polar amino acids. First, we're going to look at asparagine. Now asparagine look, should look a little bit familiar to you. That's probably because it sounds a lot like aspartic acid or aspartate, and there's a reason for that. They are very similar amino acids. So let's take a look at why. But first we have to get into our three letter abbreviation. So ASP has already taken up the ASP, uh, with aspartic acid. So for asparagine, our three-letter abbreviation will be ASN. Our one-letter abbreviation, interestingly, is not very intuitive. It is N, so asparagine. That N is coming at the end there. Now the structure, and we'll see why it's called asparagine, because it's very similar in structure to aspartic acid. So here's our backbone. Now we have one carbon coming off, another carbon, and then we have an amide group. Now this amide group, if it were a carboxylic acid, we would make this aspartic acid. So asparagine is just the amide form of aspartic acid. And its classification is polar. And its PKR, it has one at about 13, but for purposes of the MCAT, we're not really going to be too interested in protonating asparagine. All right, so special characteristics for asparagine. There are some, but they're not going to be super applicable to the MCAT. Now let's move on to glutamine. So glutamine should also sound similar to a previous amino acid, specifically glutamic acid or glutamate. Now, because glutamate has already taken up the GLU three-letter abbreviation, we have to go with GLN for glutamine. And glutamine's one-letter abbreviation is pretty wacky, and it's probably one of the least remembered. It is Q. So glutamine is Q, and that's not intuitive and something you just have to memorize. So let's get into its structure, which is a bit easier to remember because it is very similar to glutamic acid. So we have one carbon, two carbon, then another carbon that makes up an amide group. So just like asparagine is the amide form of aspartic acid, glutamine is the amide form of glutamic acid. Now its classification is also going to be polar. It does have a PKR, but we're not going to worry about it for the MCAT. Similarly, with our special characteristics, it does have some, but none that are too applicable to the MCAT. Now finally, let's take a look at cysteine. Cysteine's three-letter abbreviation is CYS, pretty intuitive. Its one-letter abbreviation is C, also very intuitive. Now, let's draw the backbone and then the side chain. One carbon attached to a thiol group. So it looks like a hydroxyl or alcohol group, but instead of an O, it has a sulfur, an S. Now its classification is polar. However, it is sometimes classified as nonpolar. Sometimes classified as nonpolar. And the reason for that is, is that cysteine is somewhere in between. It is the least polar of the polar amino acids, but it is the most polar of the nonpolar amino acids. So it doesn't really fit well into either category. Now its PKR is approximately eight. Now that's something to keep in mind because when you're calculating the PI of amino acids, 
we don't often think of polar amino acids having any appreciable ionization. However, cysteine definitely does, because our physiological pH is 7.4, and that's pretty close to 8. So if we're in a relatively basic environment, we can deprotonate cysteine quite easily. Now finally, special characteristics of cysteine. You should know that cysteine can form disulfide bonds. And this is going to be very important to protein tertiary structure. It can also be important to quaternary structure and connecting different peptides together through a covalent bond. All right. So that's it for High Yield MCAT. Leave a like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you would like to see for your MCAT exam.